Snow. You either love it or hate it. It can be picturesque or a huge pain if you need to get around. But have you ever wondered how forecasters predict snow? That's up next in this episode of Fact Bites. Before we grab our snow shovels, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you're in the know when new videos are posted. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. We love your feedback. So leave us a comment below and let us know how you like this video. And hey, if you've got an idea for an interesting topic, leave us a comment below and it might be a future episode of Fact Bites. Predicting the weather isn't easy. In fact, many experts will admit it's complicated. In this video, we'll explain a little bit about what goes into predicting snow. But there's way too much science to explain every aspect in this short video. Meteorologists go to school for years to learn the science of weather prediction. Our goal is that you'll have a better understanding of how snow predictions work. We'll give you a better understanding of why forecasts can be wrong. You know the old joke, meteorologists have the only job where they can always be wrong. That's not necessarily true, but you get the point. Weather forecasting is not a perfect science. Trained meteorologists are making an educated guess, but it's an educated guess with data that is constantly changing. If you're in the United States, there's a good chance your weather forecast starts with the National Weather Service. Even if you get your weather from your local TV weatherman or your phone, more than likely that information came from the government. According to their website, weather.gov, the National Weather Service provides weather, water, and climate forecasts and warnings for the United States, its territories, adjacent waters, and ocean areas for the protection of life and property and the enhancement of the national economy. That's a mouthful, but what it basically means is that they provide weather predictions. They create and process the raw data that is used by various forecasters. Ever heard of a thunderstorm warning or blizzard warning? Those warnings come from the National Weather Service. Many organizations take data from the National Weather Service, break it down so it's easy to understand, make fancy weather graphics, and publish a weather forecast. Since the National Weather Service is a service provided by the government, its data is free to use. NWS data is used by many large weather organizations, such as the Weather Channel and AccuWeather. Weather companies then create those fancy graphics and package them together to sell to other organizations, like your local TV station. So that's where the forecast information comes from, at least in the U.S. So how do forecasters know if it's going to snow versus just rain, or maybe just be cold and sunny? Forecasting snow can be extremely difficult, especially if you live in an area that straddles the freeze line, which is basically the border between freezing and above freezing temperatures. Forecasters have a variety of tools and weather data they can use. First, forecasters look at various weather models. Those models use a wide network of observing systems such as satellites, Doppler radars, and automated surface observing systems, or weather stations. Models may also use historical data in addition to current weather data to predict what a storm will do. Is the model predicting a large storm or just some flurries? There's a number of weather factors that can contribute to the amount of snow. And forecast models will look at available moisture in the atmosphere, which is how much moisture can translate to precipitation, barometric pressure, temperatures both in the sky and on the ground, just to name a few. Storms, both rain and snow, develop in low pressure systems. This atmospheric pressure is measured with a barometer. For the purposes of weather forecasts, the atmospheric pressure is represented on weather maps with the big H or L. In thunderstorms and hurricanes, really low pressure normally translates into stronger storms. If you're looking at the weather map and there's a big H over your hometown, you can expect relatively good weather. Storms develop around those pesky L's. Forecasters also look at the jet stream. This is a relatively narrow band of strong wind in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Think of it as a river of wind in the sky. The jet stream moves from west to east, but the flow can shift north and south, so it's not always in the same place. The stream comes together where cold polar air hits warm tempered air. 
This drops the atmospheric pressure. Since hot and cold boundaries are more pronounced in the winter, the jet stream is typically stronger in the winter. This is how cold polar air can dip south across the United States. This blast of cold air can contribute to snow. That's why temperature is another big factor. In parts of the U.S. where temperatures can hover around the freezing mark, we often see a rain-snow mix or even freezing rain and sleet. The rain-snow line can be difficult to predict. This is especially common in the Midwest and Southern states. Forecasters will look at surface temperatures. Is the ground cold enough for the snow to stick? Cold air in the sky may allow the snow to form, but if the ground is too warm, the snow won't accumulate. We all like those depth maps that show how many inches of snow we're going to get. Remember, those are predictions, and exact amounts may vary depending on where the precipitation falls. So how do forecasters come up with those numbers? Part of the answer comes from the moisture in the storm system. One of the ingredients for snow is enough lifting of saturated air so that snow can develop aloft and then fall or reach the surface. Forecasters look at potential moisture that will form in the system, fall from the sky as snow, and if the temperatures are cold enough, will stick to the ground. While there are some variations on average, 13 inches of snow equals one inch of rain. So they look at the moisture content. This is how meteorologists are able to make predictions on snow depth and create those maps we all love to see, even if they aren't always accurate. Oddly enough, one way forecasters know it probably won't snow is if it gets too cold. It rarely snows when the temperature drops below zero degrees Fahrenheit because the atmosphere is too stable. This means there's not enough lifting of the air to cause snow to reach the surface. Where you live can also factor into snow forecasting. In the mid-Atlantic states to New England, a classic storm is called a nor'easter. It starts with a low pressure system off the coast that moves north. The system will take moisture from the ocean and can dump huge amounts of snow to create blizzard conditions in New England and along the coast. In the Midwest, storms tend to form east of the Rockies. These storms pull in cold air from Canada and tap moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. Typically, these storms will move west to east or west to the northeast. In the western United States, cold air, especially at higher altitudes, and moisture from the Pacific Ocean can bring snow to the Rockies in western states. With all the signs taken into consideration, keep in mind weather predictions are not always 100% accurate. When the data is constantly changing, forecasters rely on the number of observation systems used, the power of the supercomputers used to process that data, and even the meteorologist's ability to interpret that data. Small changes in conditions can have a big impact which is why long-range forecasts can be especially inaccurate. Shorter-term forecasts tend to be more reliable. Your best bet is to always be prepared for the worst. Pay attention to forecasts that come out 24 to 48 hours before a storm. They will likely be the most accurate. During a storm, keep an eye on weather radar. There are several apps and websites with radar loops. You'll be able to see where the precipitation is falling and where it's heading. Remember, radar is essentially real-time data, not a prediction. Hopefully, we've given you a better idea of how snow prediction works. If you want to learn more about weather in your area and you're in the U.S., the National Weather Service publishes forecast discussions where you can read what meteorologists are basically interpreting from the science data. They can be rather cryptic, but it gives you a good insight into what information goes into your weather forecast. That's our look at how forecasters predict snow. As a parting weather fact, did you know the coldest temperature ever recorded on planet Earth was minus 89.2 Celsius, or minus 128 degrees Fahrenheit? That temperature was recorded on July 21st, 1983 in Antarctica. Keep in mind, it's winter in July in the Southern Hemisphere. In speaking of snow, the most snow ever recorded in the United States was on Mount Baker in Washington State. During the winter of 1998 to 99, the mountain received an astonishing 1,140 inches of snow. That's 95 feet. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe so you'll be alerted anytime we have a new video, and we'll see you next time.